Good morning, beloveds. I'm pleased to be here today with you as we consciously, as we consciousness share in this place, the Center for Spiritual Living, Chico, where we remember that we are one in spirit. Well, my intention for today's lesson, which is entitled, Remain True to Yourself, is to offer a few insights that allow your life to grow through a greater awareness of the inner self, which is your spiritual core. And the result of a greater awareness or potential or possibility is what I refer to as your how. How, H-O-W. My acronym is Harnessing Our Wisdom. The wisdom is, it is up to us to recognize it, not hold on to it, but to harness that creative power that each of us has. Yet many times we're afraid to use it. We're afraid to be powerful. We're afraid to be successful. We're afraid to be seen because somebody might judge us. Anybody else get that besides myself? <laughs> It's all happened for me, so I understand all this. We, we get to the point of our comfort. And that's many times as far as we can go. Dallas, I love that you showed me another um, stepping out of your, but my perception of your boundary. See, um, didn't note that about you. And we all have within us that um, little something that people don't know about you yet. Maybe you don't even know yet. So that's why we're here today, to uncover all of the uh, garbage. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Basic science of mind teaches us that whatever we can conceive, we can achieve. Good students. And it's the how by which all is realized and ultimately accomplished. For it's through you, it is always through you. It arises from your divine urge to be seen. And as much as you can accept, which in turn shows itself as your life, is this whole process of how you use it. And it shows up right here as your life. Right here and right now, it brought you here. I know there are some new people here today that um, you might think, well, how'd I get here? <laughs> Why am I here? How did I get to this place? <laughs> well, there's a, there's, there's a divine um, urge within, within you to, to be here, for all of us to be here. And we get to find that out when we get here. You can't just wonder and stay home and go, well, maybe I coulda, shoulda, woulda, but unless you show up in life, life won't show up for you. I've learned that one too. Well, the first step, to, is to realize that you make the difference in your life. Let me say that in a different way, with emphasis. You make the difference. You make the difference. You create it. Say after me, I make the difference. One more time, I Make the difference. No one else can do that for you. 
you come here or you hear from many of us trying to help our, myself and you along with, with this whole idea of we're, we're in charge of our lives. We get to make the calls. We are being true to ourselves, first and foremost. Now, the difference is made by being an example. When we show up as the example of how, of how the principles of this teaching work. Beginning right here where you are, each of you have equal harnessing capability for something greater. What is the greater? What is that greater? It's a boundary. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a gift that you haven't yet realized that is yours. That is yours. I've seen it in myself, and I've seen it in all the ones I know in this room. And that every time someone says, oh, I want to do that. I've never done that. Well, can you do that? I don't know yet. But I'm going to try. I'm going to try. So, in the annual meeting, I want to tag on to that for a moment. Those of you who were here, we have lots of um, goals. We have lots of um, things we'd like to realize. And one of them is our Zoom classroom. Well, the energy was charged on that day. And this had been percolating for so long that all it took was a little bit of spark, and within, I don't know, five minutes, I'll give this much, I'll pay this much. The, the room is paid for. It's the right time. It was the perfect place, the perfect people. We kept suggesting, we kept um, harnessing, <laughs> but it doesn't come until it's right as well. So there is that treating in the treatment, the meditation I did today. This and something greater, letting the attachment go and letting it show up. When Ernest Holmes tells us, when we learn to trust the universe, we shall be happy, prosperous, and well. We must learn to come under the divine government and accept the fact that nature's table is forever filled. Never was there a cosmic famine. Wow. Never. The finite alone, which is right here, has wrought and suffered. The infinite lies stretched in smiling repose. So what are we waiting for? It's waiting for us. Open the door. What's our annual theme here this year? For Be your authentic and true self. Boy, well, are we going to see changes this year? <laughs> or maybe revelations is happening this year for us. We know I believe these seeds, the seeds of love for all of that, have already been planted in the mind of God. It's very fertile, you know, that mind of God. There's always enough rainfall. There's always enough wind. But it takes nourishment, doesn't it? The soil of mind, like the soil for farmers, takes nourishment occasionally. Our nourishment in mind is a seed of possibility. You can't have a seed sprout unless you put it in the soil. You can hold on to it, but it won't reveal its true nature until it's planted. So each of us have an opportunity to invest 
in our fertile field, in ourselves, at the center, and it takes time and talent and treasure to realize a greater harvest, doesn't it? So what do you think the catalyst for the germination of a new seed thought, what is the greatest catalyst for that? Love. Love. What was yours? Prayer. Sort of the, the same box of a fertilizer. Or, yeah, fertilizer. <laughs> it's, it's, it's enriching the soil with whatever it takes for our own ideas to germinate. So, I've been, I dubbed myself the Wonder Man a few years ago because I, I wonder a lot. I question a lot. So, I have a question, a couple questions. Maybe three. <laughs> Do you love yourself? Okay. Do you? Yeah. Honestly? Okay. Uh -huh. That's honest. Sometimes I heard. <laughs> Yeah. Well, like myself, you may feel that there are some parts of you that, if anyone found out, would uh, people would define you as that. Whatever that awful thing might be in your own mind. I call these the weeds. All those thoughts. All those negatives. They don't define you because they're not true for you. They, I call, add-ons. They've come along later in life. We've added them on. Stick, 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 stick. I love this writing by John Kim, K-I-M. We all have issues because we all have a history. And no matter how much work you've done on yourself, you will snap back sometimes. <laughs> so, be easy on you. Growth is a dance, not a light switch. Growth is a dance, not a light switch. So go, go easy on yourself. So back to the add-ons for a minute. Can you think of an add-on you don't have to call it out, but can you think of an add-on that, that you maybe are carrying right now? Some kind of a label. It might even have been this morning. Oh, I'm so fill in the blank. Such a klutz. Uh, anything, anything. Well, those are add-ons. Those are, those are little things we learned along life's paths. But they're not at your core. They are not the truth of yourself. The self being the spiritual self. So, in order to uncover and love the true you, you must begin right here where you are in recognizing those add-ons. And then, guess what? Love yourself more. Love yourself more. What do you do to love yourself? Is there some ritual? Is there a, I mean, some people like, you know, candles in a tub and music, and that's all good too. What do you, how do you love yourself? Proper nutrition? Forgiveness, that's loving. Say, hmm? Sing. Love that. <laughs> Unconditional love? Yes. Anything else? I love being with all of you, for one. That's the first thing that comes to my mind. Because there's such a, it's, it's very, uh, like Reverend Kathy says, it's very juicy here. <laughs> it's like a really good, really good meal, you know? Lots of flavor, lots of flavor. So, love yourself with a capital S. Your spiritual self. Ernest Holmes tells us, the real self is God-given and cannot be denied. It is the place where God comes to a point of individualized 
and personified expressions. I am the light of the world, is the end of the quote. Beloved, you and I are the light of the world, individually. The substance of the divine self, individualized, personified, and serving as stewards of our own spiritual evolution. It is our baseline upon which our life is forever standing and expanding. So that's where we always stand. That's where we always are at that point of, as Dr. Carroll has always just reminded me, a point of self-choice. We're always standing in that place, no matter what's going on. So I have some imagery to share with you, and I thought it was interesting that in our, um, in our meditation there were references to nature, Mother Nature, Earth, all of that. So if you choose, close your eyes and imagine with me. Imagine each of us in this room as individual trees, standing tall and together. Some taller than others, but all of us standing tall. And each of us has contained within us rings, the rings of the tree, which symbolize growth and wisdom from the core of each tree through the rings and to the outstretched limbs. These limbs connecting one to another, not to all, but this one or that one. Eventually, throughout all those trees, we touch and are connected to each other. Our rings of knowledge are shared and overlap here and there and eventually everywhere. And so our humanity, like trees, when individually standing at its highest self, lovingly shares wisdom with all others remaining true to its highest self. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. Pick one thing you admire about yourself. Nobody? Honesty? Joyfulness? Authenticity, strength? Compassion? <laughs> Life humor, perfect, yeah? Openness? Kindness? Creativity, yeah. Well, that is the light that you bring to the world. That is your gift that you offer first and foremost, because that's your first response to the question. You are the light in your world, and let that lead you. Love that first. Focus on that. Power that truth. And that may change that first response, that first admiration point of view. It is your gift. Another question. What intentions in this life recently have you demonstrated? Serving others? Compassion, 
forgiveness. Acceptance. I would I would guess and offer that all of us serve someone somewhere, don't we? Whether it's our family, whether it's our friends, we're always giving something somewhere, a kind word. It could be a look. It could be a hug. So we're always in service with our true self. And that's who we are. So, when we leave here today, remember that when you walk in love, the whole world is more beautiful. When you walk in love. Because what do you see? Yeah. You see, with, you see from love. Ernest Holmes tells us, the, in the ideas of power, love is the only final security in the universe. Love is the greatest healing power in the universe. And the only thing that binds people together in a community of spirit is love. So, beloveds, weed the garden of your mind often. You know how to do that, don't you? Yeah. Weeding out is part of harnessing the wisdom that certainly is ready for your doing. Wake up. The God within is smiling and happy and generous. So, another question. What good have you been resisting? And Frank told us, and I quote, Everyone has inside him a piece of good news. The good news is that you don't know how great you can be how much you can love, what you can accomplish, and what your potential is." End quote. The opening song reminded us, love changes everything. It will turn your world around. We become as a fool. I had a problem with that. <laughs> Did you catch that? We become as a fool, which I had to look up. Thank you. Thank you, teacher. Well, it's defined as a marked propensity or fondness for something spontaneous. Isn't that great? How many of you are spontaneous? Two, three. Oh, here's more. <laughs> Spontaneity is, a, is a, an interesting thing because you have to be like out there. It's like, hey, what, what? and then you go do this thing. It's like, what, nobody else? Just me? Ooh, okay. But spontaneity. Make a fool out of yourself in love, with love. Whatever you love, do it fully. So, um, <laughs> I won't ask that one. Um, let's affirm. <laughs> I have... Abundance. More than enough of freedom, loving relationships, time, energy, and money. Martha Graham said, There is the vitality, a life force, a quickening that is translated through you and into action. And because there is only one of you in all time, only one of you. It will never exist through any other medium and will be lost. Don't, don't deny yourself from the rest of us. It's such a beautiful thing. In closing, remember, remain true to yourself because you make a difference in this life. Only you. That's a song, isn't it, Darnell? Only you? Mm hmm Okay. <laughs> the seeds of love are planted by you. Your desires are at the core of your demonstration. Celebrate the power of spirit.
and divine wisdom that is within you. Love yourself as never before. It is possible. It's possible right now. Be easy on you and dance in the light of possibility. And as you do, your life will reveal the good news only you can provide to the world. And so it is. Namaste.